but we'll go ahead and uh, kick us off. I want to welcome everyone who is who is attending. Um, this is being hosted by the Women in Action Central Texas chapter within Dell. Women in Action is an employee resource group that is actually a global resource group, even though there are um, individual chapters that operate in, in specific locations as well. And we're really excited to um, co-host or have Breaking the Glass host this webinar for us and panelists to give us some ideas on, on networking in the, in the more digital world. So Elizabeth, I'll let you start. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, you know, and thank you again for um, allowing us to come in and present to um, your group. It has been um, a goal of mine to be able to work with um, Dell. I live in Austin, so just um, you know, hearing all the wonderful things that y'all been able to do um, as a resource group has been incredible. So just um, if this is your first breaking the glass event, um, love to give you a little bit of background about our program. Um, so Breaking the Glass was founded by Computer Futures, which is a contract technical recruitment company. We specialize in finding talent in Salesforce, mobile, um, BI, Adobe, and various other software development languages. And when the um, office was getting started in the Texas region, the leadership knew that they wanted to do something more to impact gender equity beyond uh, making sure that their recruiters understood that they have unconscious biases, pushing back when hiring managers were maybe giving bias feedback, saying like, okay, well, if you're saying they're not a culture fit, let's explore that, let's break that down. So what they decided to do is create a community group where we could come together and talk about what these challenges look like for women in tech and for like greater diversity and inclusion as well. So the program's been going on um, about four years and it's really taken off in the Austin area. Um, you know, we definitely miss our in-person programming, but since April we've been going um, fast and hard with our webinar programs and it's been absolutely great because we get to bring in um, speakers and from all across the nation. So you'll see a lot of, um, a lot of different time zones are represented here and um, we're just uh, so grateful to be here and I'm Gonna, you know kick it off to Stephanie Herrera who um, works with me at Computer Futures and then she's gonna introduce herself and then the panelists and then they're gonna get started on our amazing discussion if anyone has any questions um, throughout the panel you there's the Q&A chat option at the bottom please chat them in there so that we have a central place to look for all the questions um, again thank you so much and I like I like Stephanie take it away Hi everybody, um, as Elizabeth mentioned, my name is Stephanie Herrera and I am the Global VP for our Salesforce practice at Computer Futures. I've been with them since 2019. Um, I am also the founder of Salesforce Saturdays, which is a global community, has over 60 chapters throughout the world that help people learn Salesforce, get access to our networks and get jobs. Um, I also co-founded Pep Up Tech, which helps minorities and underrepresented communities um, learn Salesforce, get access to our networks and get jobs. I'm on the board of directors for Maravis, which is just like Pep Up Tech, but it's for veterans and their spouses. Um, and I've been in tech for 22 years and I got my start um, in tech at Dell. So my heart is racing right now to be able to um, come home basically is what this feels like. So um, it's, it's, it's just an honor to be part of this and to be back in part of this amazing group of women. I've, in my journeys, I've told everybody that Dell was way ahead of its time, um, so progressive. Um, I took it for granted that I was exposed to so many male and female leaders um, and LGBTQ leaders. Um, I thought that was normal. I grew up there. I was just a kid when I got started. I was so scared the first day I walked in that door. And the last day that I left, nine and a half years later, um, I was a totally different person thanks to the amazing male and female leadership at Dell. And what I found was that um, when I got out into the world and went to work for many, many other companies, that that Dell was the exception. So consider yourself also very lucky to be part of this beautiful network um, that is Dell and Dell females. Um, so then from there, I will let the rest of the panelists introduce themselves. Um, Lisa, why don't you go next? Hi, sorry, I had to unmute there. Uh, my name is Lisa Miller. I am uh, in Boston, so I'm here from the East Coast. I am an agency owner and I've started several women's organizations um, to help women grow and in leadership. 
Um, most recently, I was featured on the cover of the Boston Business Journal for a woman um, growing one of the largest agencies in the state. And I, um, I just started another conference called Sales Empowerment Summit for Women. And what that does is help women to empower their sales process through their own personal um, strengths. Um, and I just came out of an agency and I'm starting my own agency all over again during it during a pandemic. Uh, so that's where I am now. Lauren, you want to go next? I was going to say, you want me to go next? Awkward pause. Hi, everybody. My name is Lauren Bailey. You can call me LB. I'm really honored to be asked to be here. I grew up in tech as well, helping a lot of big technology companies compete with Dell. So um, I used to run a sales program for Compaq. Remember when they existed? And HP and IBM, I traveled the world training their salespeople how to sell direct. And um, my last corporate gig was with SAP, where I was in charge of their global training strategy. And again, got to take fabulous planes around the world until, um, frankly, I got sick of a bit of the boys club in corporate America, jumped out and started my own business 12 years ago. So I'm an entrepreneur, the founder of three brands. Now you see two of them behind me, Factor 8. My first baby is 12 years old and we do training for frontline reps and managers. Harking back to uh, helping little Lauren and how lost she felt 20 years ago when uh, I grew up in technology and running sales teams and being a seller. Um, and then the other company I want to tell you about is Girls Club. We're co-sponsoring today. And uh, Girls Club is a passion project of mine that's about helping change the face of sales leadership. So we're all about taking women who are already in sales and sales related careers and helping speed up their promotion track. And we do it with an exclusive training program once a year where everybody is taking part in management development training and getting mentors who are amazing women from different companies. And we do spotlight events and a lot of confidence building as well. So anybody who's listening to this who maybe is already a sales director and wants to mentor or wants to take part, we'll love to tell you about it another time. So thanks for having me. I'm going to kick it over to Michelle. Thank you uh, for being here. Um, this is incredible. So glad to be a part of this. Um, my name is Michelle Baker. My background is sales. I actually um, majored in finance and I found myself in sales because of my knack for wanting to have conversations with people. As soon as my uh, finance assignments were done, I would go and start talking to all the colleagues at where I worked. It was the Clorox company at that time. So I actually started uh, doing Yellow Pages advertising. I did pharmaceuticals. I went to medical devices and I landed in biotech. And um, one of the things that I found was each journey was through networking. It was literally someone who knew me who reached out knew the value of what I offered and how well I sold um, and how I built territories and helped get territories up and running quickly and supported my management teams that really opened so many doors for me. I currently um, own my own business. Uh, I work with the National Association of Sales Professionals as their global director. I also um, am a co-founder in a global business growth community for conscious entrepreneurs. Um, that's called Shiftco, and I'm launching my business, which is Superfan Solutions, where I teach people about sales and confidence and how to become your own super fan before you ever go out and establish and create another one. And that's uh, whatever your end user is, um, if it's just your boss or if it's um, your subscriber or your donator, your client, but you must be your own super fan internally before you externally communicate that to anyone else. So I'm really excited to be here and have this conversation because networking is game changing for your careers, ladies. Amazing. So as y'all can see, you are in for a real treat with this rock star panel of women. We did a little prep a couple of days ago and I felt after we finished, after talking to them, I felt like my tribe strengthened by a thousand just from having a conversation with these amazing ladies. So let's get started. I'm going to kick off with the first question, which is... Stephanie, I have to pause. What about Lisa? She went first. Did we hear from Lisa already? Really? <laughs> oh my God, and I interrupted you? Hey, it's okay. We're having a conversation. We're having a conversation. That's what this is. Sometimes you know these things happen. <laughs> oh my gosh! I was like, oh, that, poor thing. that is a perfect example of how we support other women. We make sure <laughs> out are forgotten. 
I may have taken that slightly too far. Don't apologize for that. I love it. All right. That's hilarious. All right. I'm going back on mute. Here we go. Question. Why do we network? How does it benefit ourselves and our company? Lisa, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, so for me, network has, networking has been one of the most wonderful things I've done in my life, my whole life, not just as a professional, but just throughout my life, networking has created all the different doors and opened all the opportunities and helped me get to where I am today. And it's all about who you know. <laughs> and so um, it's just kind of a misconception that networking is just for business or for sales or to get that next lead because that's really not what it's about. Um, one of the most important things that networking brings you is it builds your confidence. It gets you out there. It gets you able to communicate. And communication is a vital skill for any job that you're in. Um, and it's a great way to learn, to continue a journey of lifelong learning through other peers, other people you meet. And you can bring, you can build long-term relationships like I have that last you your whole life. Some of my best friends are people I've met through networking. And that's just really personally uh, fulfilling for me and I think for everybody. Um, it also opens doors to future opportunities, whether they're for work, whether they're personal. Um, but again, the saying it's who you know is really, really important, whether it's you know, getting a promotion in your next job and knowing who the different players are in your company or whether it is trying to get your kid into a different school. Um, there's lots of ways that networking um, can you know, really help you with that. And there's so much more personal growth in networking because you can learn so much. And as we sit here and talk about diversity, it really can expand you into meeting people you may never have met before. And now with this remote networking, I mean, it just expands it even, even more because people, I guess, are expecting it. Um, and it makes it easier you know, to get your foot in the door to start networking. Um, and for me, other people always inspire and, and motivate me. I'm an extrovert, but for those people who are introverts, you can still get that same kind of <laughs> you can still get that same kind of inspiration and motivation by connecting with people over things that you've common interests in. So, like if you're a developer, I mean, we all know developers are mostly introverts. They have the largest communities out there. Think about YouTube gamers. Um, they have huge communities of people, and they never leave their office chair. My son, for example, is a gamer and a video producer, and his best friends are all people that he met remotely. And he considers them his best friends, and he's not even met you know, most of them. Um, the other thing that's really great about networking is it can get you involved in the community, so you don't always have to do business networking. There's lots of community opportunities that you can get involved in, such as volunteering. Some of the most amazing people I've met have been through volunteering. And you, that really expands your network of different types of people in diversity because you might meet the CEO of a company and you might meet somebody who's, you know, um, in a completely different profession or maybe they don't even work. Um, so friendships, partnerships, inspiration, there's so many pieces of networking that can help complete you like as a whole person. And it doesn't really matter how you do it. I think you just have to find common interests or things that you're interested in and figure out ways to, um, you know, to get into those networks and just really let them blast you off into like an amazing future for growth. I, I couldn't agree more, Lisa. <laughs> like networking is like, you're basically leveling yourself up. And what I like to tell my, my communities is when you go network, always ask them why they're there, what, what they're looking to get out of it. Because just like you said, you don't know what you don't know. You know, and you won't know unless you ask, why are you here? What are you looking to get out of this? And then you'll have doors open to you that you didn't even know needed to be open. And that's what's so great about networking and leveling up, just like you said. Um, so let's go on to the next question. Networking can feel like this very overwhelming task. Now we're networking digitally, which feels more intentional than attending in-person events. Michelle, what are your tips for defining your networking goal and selling yourself confidently? Well, uh, great question. Um, networking does not nat uh, often feel natural. That's why so many times when you go places, um, the first thing people do will, is to start to introduce themselves and tell you about themselves. Uh, what I tell people is that think of yourself as being valuable, right? Um, the whole point of working is to what? Create income, to make you know money. And so people have this concept that we make money and one of the phrases I remind people is that the only people that make money work in a mint. So you actually exchange your value for a paycheck. You want 
to create more value, you go out and network. So think about how you can be valuable with whomever you're going to network with. What is it I can bring to, if it's an event, if I'm going to a webinar, if I'm jumping on a call, if I'm talking one-on-one, -on -one, and we have so many social tools out there where you can go look up people. So if you know you're gonna be connecting and there's somebody there that you really wanna to talk to, you know they may be game-changing for your career, mosey on over to LinkedIn and take a look, right? Go over to Facebook and take a look. So it actually will become easier and more natural when you make the effort to be valuable to those people that you want to connect with instead of trying to get something. What I tell people is when you focus on the give, it gets a lot easier and a lot more simple and you'll be more gracious when you don't of yourself when you don't do it perfectly right if remember when you're doing something you've never done before it's going to feel weird uncomfortable um, you're going to make mistakes but your willingness to do it from a give place will make it a lot easier and it will help with your career people are more engaged with people who are engaged with them the saying is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So showing up and being valuable is absolutely incredible to any networking event, anything you participate in, especially virtually now, um, it's game changing for you and your career and the people that you're connecting with. Michelle, the first thing I say every time is how can I help you? How can I help? I every that. time. And it's, I'll tell you what, now I really notice the people who don't right. The people who have pinged me in like five times in a row, they're asking for something. I'm like, Hmm, you stand out. Yeah. Not well. And um, I'm speaking a little louder. I've been told my mic's not. Can y'all hear me now? Is, yes. Me? Ooh, that wasn't me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie, did, did that answer your question? <laughs> um, and, and, and what you were saying earlier, Michelle, about, you know, this in, in the virtual world, I, for one, I mean, I've been going to events for so long. And the very first time I had to do a sales for Saturday, we usually have them every every Saturday here in Austin. The first time I had to do it virtually with my community, um, half of them didn't show up. There was a lot of new faces. And after it was done, I was so overwhelmed that I cried. I literally cried and was like, I can't do this again. I can't, I, I had to, I can't do it every Saturday. I switched it to bi-weekly and I had to figure out how to exist in this new world. And it was very overwhelming. It was very frightening. And what I did is I started going to other events and getting fuel from other speakers that helped give me yes. what I needed in order to be able to do what I needed to do in this virtual world. So right on exactly what you said. Um, so next on to the third question, what's the difference in networking to find a mentor or a sponsor versus building a larger circle of supportive peers? Additionally, how do we maintain those relationships virtually? Lauren, I know you discussed this with the girls club. So why don't you go ahead and take this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy to. By the way, I love how you share tips, Stephanie, on the introvert networking, <laughs> right? Like how kind of you to be vulnerable and say like, this is hard for me. And here's what I did. And by the, yeah, like you can just tell you're a sensitive, emotional, intelligent, but introverted yeah, person. Love that you're hosting today and giving oh, me these tips. So um, and still feeling embarrassed that I tried to in introduce these. <laughs> All right. Um, so there is a difference when you're reaching out, right? So when you're networking with peers, I think it's really, really important to start there because in corporate America, it is your peers who will push you up. That's just all there is to it. There are some people who are great at communicating and managing up. Um, mm -mm, it's the peers that push you up. So help them along the way, right? Um, but when you're looking for a mentor or a sponsor or advocate, that's a little different. And I'm going to start by defining them, okay? So a sponsor or advocate would be somebody who is at the company with you, who may not necessarily be in your upline, but who is up. It's the person who talks for you and represents you in the room when you're not there. Because I gotta be honest, a ton of hiring happens because of networks, right? It's who you know, but it almost always comes down to a sound bite. It's one of the things the executives will never tell you, but once you've seen it happen in the room, you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe that it comes down to that. You have done applications, you've done resumes, you've done projects, you've built a portfolio, you built a 90 day plan. In the end, it's six people sitting around a conference room and you get about a 20 second sound bite. Oh yeah, Stephanie, she's that blah, 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 blah. It's weird, but true. Shouldn't be true, but it is. So um, you want somebody who knows you really well and who gets invited into that room often 
to be the person who provides your soundbite, right? Otherwise it's conjecture. It's what, it's the impression that's like telephone, right? That somebody heard, that somebody heard, that somebody heard in a big company. All right. So that's a sponsor or an advocate. And you want that person. Absolutely. A mentor um, is sometimes the same thing, but very often a mentor is going to stick with you longer, right? A mentor is somebody who's with you for years. Um, one of my mentors was one of my first bosses. Um, then he wound up hiring me again, and he's still a mentor 20 years later. So that would be, they may not be in your company, but it's somebody that you can go and talk to about your boss, where you can't really do that with the sponsor or the advocate, right? All right, cool. So how do you network with them? So at a peer level, what you do is, hey, how are you? And how can I help? And saw you at so-and-so. So here's how we're mutually connected. And now I want to offer help in one way or another, okay? And you do it as much as you can, give to get. And when you're going up, you're really asking them for their time. And the busier you get and the higher you get in an organization, the more precious that is, right? I've, I have reps that call me and I'm like, hey, can I have 30 minutes? I'd rather give you $400. I don't have 30 minutes, <laughs> okay? No, you can't, you gotta earn that. So I want all of us to remember that when you're asking somebody to be a mentor or a sponsor for you, you're asking for regular bits of their time. And what usually works very well in this situation is some flattery right? You need to let that person know why you've picked them, right? I've been admiring you for X period of time. I love how you handled A, B, and C. I saw you speak at blah, 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 okay? I would be honored if I could have you as a mentor, sponsor, advocate, whatever really works, right? You don't have to justify it, but at that point, you got to sell yourself just a little bit, right? I'm really eager to move up. Uh, it's, I love leading people. I have been at Dell for 20 years and want to be here for another 20. Like you need a sound bite there that says, I'm not a stranger off the street. I'm not a whack job. Uh, <laughs> I'm intelligent. I'm fabulous. And I'm somebody you should invest in. So that hopefully makes sense to everybody. Right. And then from there, the most important thing you can do is own it. Okay. I've had people ask me to be their mentor and then disappear. I've had people ask me to mentor and no show to meetings. I've had people ask me to mentor and then get to the call and just sit there like I'm supposed to tap dance or something. Like, I'm not here to entertain you, girl. You gotta, you gotta bring the agenda. You gotta book the meetings. You gotta book the follow-up. You gotta bring value. You gotta bring questions, right? You gotta own that and you gotta keep owning it. I've been so impressed with the women who will have a few meetings and then keep going right? They book it the next month and they book it the next month and they book it the next month. And it's some of the most valuable conversations and relationships I've ever had, but it, it only kept going because they drove it. Right. And, uh, and, and they were compelling when they asked, I don't know. I hope that's helpful. Does that answer your question, Stephanie? Absolutely, Lauren. And I got to tell you, so many people will focus on the mentor and the sponsor piece, but I love how you really drove home the peer piece. That is huge. It's so, it's, to me, it's almost even more important because one, you're gonna have more peers and they, they're in the weeds with you and they really know you and, and can point out your strengths and weaknesses. So don't miss that piece. Just like she said, the peer is just as important as a mentor and the sponsor part. And then also having the sound bite. I, for a long time, I, I didn't, I would, when I would introduce myself, I would just say my, where I work and I wouldn't mention all the other things because I honestly felt like it sounded obnoxious and just didn't want to hear it. And then a great sponsor and mentor, Christina Jones, who's an SVP at, at Salesforce, put me in touch with a coach who did some development of me. And she said, Stephanie, what, when people ask you who you are or what you do, what they're really saying is, why do you matter? And when she said that, a light bulb went up in my head. It was like, why do I matter? Well, let me tell you why I matter. So think of that for your soundbite. Why do you matter? Like she said, why should somebody sit up and pay attention? Because other people are going to be using that soundbite to describe you. So yes, you absolutely nailed it, Lauren. Thank you so much. Okay, on to the next question. As a saleswoman, you have seen plenty of examples of networking, good and bad. Can you share a few examples, Michelle? Huh, thank you. Um, well, bad is uh, one of the things I thought about when I heard this question first is uh, it's been so long since I've done bad networking that I couldn't remember. Um, but one of the first things I thought is people being nervous and asking you about, you know, telling you what they do. And then when you ask them a question, they talk way too long. So being prepared, like you said, to have a sound bite 
to just answer. And what I teach people is um, with confidence is just say enough so the other person asks you a question, right? When you're networking, the goal is to be valuable. And the way you know you're offering value is they've asked you a follow-up question. If they have not asked you a follow-up question, it might not be your person. There's a room full of people. Keep it moving. Go to the next. Thank them for their time. But you, once you're engaged, they will ask you continue follow-up questions and not at, and asking questions like, what brings you here today? Like um, Lauren said, how can I help you? What are you looking for? What would really change your business right now or your career? What, what, are you, what is your greatest wish? So asking questions that really ignite and get people's energy and passions and get them excited is game changing because again, these are your peers. These are the people you're connecting with. And another quote that I love, people don't remember what you said. They don't remember what you did. They never forget how you made them feel. And when you can engage someone in a powerful, inspiring and igniting conversation, they will never forget you. And that's your value. You start to brand yourself and differentiate yourself in your career and where you work and, and thrive. Michelle, I love that. As you were speaking, all I could think of, and maybe some of the key words you're saying was like, the efforts that we as women go through, through when we get dolled up to go out on a date, or we're trying to lure a man in, or a woman, which one, who that is that we want in our lives. If we put the same effort into our professional lives as we do our personal lives, women really would run the world. So uh, that, that just got me thinking on that. So I, I love that. Thank you. I don't know what hashtag that is, but that <laughs> needs to be a hashtag. If we put that same effort in our career and yes. being prepared, yep. like Lauren said, not just showing up, sitting there, right? Showing up like you would on a date if you were trying to get him to put a ring on it, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Yes, it would be completely different. I, I so agree. But yes, and that's why I always tell people value first, money follows. Your life gets so much easier when you show up valuable because you attract. Exactly. You attract opportunity to you. You attract people start to know you. They start to, to have because trust me, they're talking about you. Have you decided what they're saying is always my question. You yeah. get to say you get to decide. Define your own narrative just like yeah. you do personal life. Love Michelle, can I can I just follow up on that really quick? I, I love how you said attract, right? Like, I think everybody has a bit of an energy or an aura about them. And um, not to go too woo woo, but <laughs> no when woo -woo. I um, it, when I go into a room, a conference, a training, a whatever speaking event, right? And I I'm like, oh, I gotta nail this because I really need to land this X Y Z client, right? I feel like I give off a whole different stank than when I go in and spend five minutes before and say, I really want to help some people today. Right. Right. Like, how can I give, how can I change a life today? Like that all different. You vibrate at this higher level and you do, you attract people. To you. you do. You absolutely do. And I, I'll tell you what, right after I started girls club, I felt like I was like, Oh my God, I found my mission in life. And at least 20 people who saw me in that first year afterwards are like, what's different about you? What's different about you? Yes. Doing? That's when you know, like you said, when we were talking about the networking and, and attracting, people want to know. So that now you get that lean in, right? Instead of the lean away, like, oh, right? You get when you're the, authentic. Hey, right? <laughs> That's what I call the lean in versus the lean away. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when you feel aligned and authentic. Yes. With a genuine desire to connect and help, people flock to you. Yes. I mean, I felt it when we did our prep and I'm feeling it now. So yes, I love, perfect, Michelle. All right, we'll go on to the next question. Beyond using LinkedIn, what are other ways to network and build community virtually? Lisa, you've written about this before. So why don't you kick us off on this one? Yeah, um, I actually re wrote an article on LinkedIn about um, you know remote working or you know remote networking for extroverts because we're so used to going out and doing all of that. Um, but my true journey, like with really building my name and networking and relationship building, started from me wanting to build my own community to network in. Um, and so I did that on Facebook actually, and obviously it was before the pandemic. It's been about five years that I've started that journey and like through that group I've created a networking group called Metro West Women's Network and it's a Facebook group. So if you are really interested in certain things, I think any social network is a great place to 
get involved in a community. You don't always have to be the spotlight of the networking. You can just be involved. So whatever your expertise is and your interest is, you can just join groups that you really like and that are of your interest. It doesn't even have to be like a business networking. It could be knitting. It could be anything because you're still going to, you know, people in other businesses still knit. So it, whatever you love, um, get in there and, you know, be an expert, provide your insight, take insight, ask questions. And that's kind of a way to get your foot in the door, like with some of this online networking, especially like on F Facebook. I feel like Facebook is a really great place to do networking because people are kind of on Facebook in their life. Whereas like LinkedIn, like you're not really on there checking out your friends, you're more on there for business. So it can create more of an authentic um, network for you. I have 4,000 people now in that work network and it's, it's a, um, a community that I run and part of what I do is a job now. I never thought it would be that. So that's one way to do it. Um, another way to do it is to just collaborate with people like, and like what Lauren was talking about, getting a mentor. Um, I once wanted this big CMO woman in Boston to be in my conference and I knew some different people knew her and stuff like that. And so what I did was I asked her to speak, you know, I asked her to speak at the conference and just through her coming in and her real her, um, me asking her and that just showed her that I really thought she was an expert and bringing her in, you know, she's become a little bit of a mentor to me through that. And that was like, never the intention. I just really wanted her as a speaker. I couldn't believe she was even more receptive to being a bit of a mentor to me also. And even online communities for your local um, chambers. One thing I really believe in is local and getting involved in your local chambers. I don't care if you're a multinational business, you're still in a community. And those chambers right now are offering all different kinds of networking groups and they're smaller. So you can get involved online at that level if you don't like social media. Um, and you know, just other ways to um, participate in online networking is watching like webinars like this and getting involved in the comments and seeing the cool people that are here and finding people you might not might want to network with and then you know connecting with them on other channels like instagram and twitter or linkedin um that's a great way to start a lot of these conversations and i think it just all starts with little conversations and figuring out like you know what do we have in common are we good people to network together because one of the downfalls of networking is you know, people kind of look at it like I want to network with everybody, but you can't because you can network with people and know who they are. But unless you really have a relationship with some of those people, it's really not that valuable. So what you really want to do once you start networking in these groups is start to build relationships with these people that you want to network with, figure out a way to manage your contacts, um, which Stephanie's probably got some great advice on that. Um, and, you know, and as the relationships grow, you'll find places in your life even remotely where these people can um, fit into your life or you can fit into their life where they can add value to your life you can add value to theirs and so there's just like so many ways to do that um, online and i couldn't cover them all you know right now but definitely getting involved in some groups some webinars you know podcasts and finding finding out where you want to be and who you want to be there with and getting your foot in the door to to do that and networking is a little bit less threatening than being a presenter, like today, like Stephanie being the, like I, that's not my strength. <laughs> um, I'm much better like uh, as a one-on-one -on -one person and going to a, an event or being in an event online and participating that way. So it depends what your strength is as, um, as a networker. If you're more of the leader, you don't mind getting up, you don't mind introducing people, or if you're just somebody who kind of likes to talk to everybody. And just as a funny story, this is not remote networking, but I once went to a chamber event with a big chamber that was my first time going. And it was a lot of bankers and insurance people and people that I don't normally network with and a lot of men. <laughs> so I brought my friend with me um, who owns another agency and I asked him to be my videographer. So with what I did was I went around and videoed everybody I met and I made a little video for the chamber. And that allowed me to have a bit of an icebreaker with these people because I, I would have no idea what to say to them. So pull some tools out of your toolbox, like be unique, try different things, like step outside the comfort zone that you're in. It's super fun. You have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> you did great, Lisa. You hit all of them. Twitter, Instagram, some of the, those are some of my favorite ones. Um, and, you know, again, figuring this thing out virtually, um, panels, when you, you know, bleh, can you speak now? I'm getting so excited. <laughs> 
in these panels and these webinars, we can't see y'all. And so um, that is one part of doing this virtually that that's hard for us. But I always love it after I speak on a webinar and I get a message on LinkedIn and somebody says, hey, what you said about this really resonated with me. Yeah. Can I get 15 minutes? Can I get this or that of your time? And they give me a good reason. I will make time. So that's another way. When you attend a webinar that there's a panelist that really spoke to you, reach out to them on LinkedIn. Let them know that is a great way to connect with them. The, what, these webinars have been eye-opening for me. Like one that I did that I was a speaker on um, was with a gentleman named Ryan Patel. And I would just like connected with him. I loved the way he thought. And so I reached out to him and said, you know, I'd like to pick your brain. You're an amazing speaker. And I told him, I said, you know, with this whole new way of living or doing networking, I, it's been really hard for me because my power has always been being in the room, physically being in the room. That's my power. If I'm in the room, I can connect. I can make things happen. I make introductions. I said, and that's been taken away from me. And that's been really hard. And he immediately said, he's no, said, Stephanie, no, that's what you think your power is. Your power is you, wherever you are, whether it's in a room, virtually, on a phone, it's you. Y'all, that was like the best advice I'd ever gotten. And I, I, I spoke, to, this was like a month and a half ago. So you never know, Lisa, you think you might not be a good moderator. You don't know. This is only my second time. <laughs> you just don't know. And that was like, you, you get great advice from people like that on panels and webinars. I um, mean, I do know, Lauren, you wanted to add something to this, please. I just love where you guys were going with that. Like, can I be honest? Angela Gore, I know you now. You typed a question in, right? Like, speak up and, and ask a question. When you're connecting on LinkedIn, like you said, a little flattery goes a long way, right? And, and then in, you get an exchange from that and people will give you the time. I think that sometimes, and Michelle, you can talk to this better than me probably, but I think sometimes we lack confidence to do that. I know that when I first got a chance to be in the same room with some of the women I've admired through my career who were like titans in my industry and authors, and I just was. I love that word, titans. What a beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was fangirling hard. And when we fangirl, we feel about an inch tall. Can we be honest? Like, oh my God, that's Jill Conrath. Yeah. Oh, I felt dumb, fat, and ugly all at once. And it, it, right. And it was just like, mm, what could I ever add? And what value could I, mm. and, and it's crap. We got to stop doing that. Um, it, the people will, who reach out to me after being on a panel or a host or whatever, such a small percent are brave enough to ask a question, put in a personal something, email, text, etc. There are women who have been part of my girls club program who are just starting out their babies in their career, but they're brave enough to reach out. And now we're text friends and we send pictures of our kids and <laughs> we'll be lifelong friends, but it's just, we're all human. And that's the beautiful thing that's happened with social media and networking, right? I never would have got a chance to meet my favorite sales author ever. And now I can send her a personal message. Well, I mean, I never would have been exposed to any of you ladies. We would have all been running around traveling the world, going from event to event. We're in different yeah. now. Yeah. But with this pandemic, yeah, yeah, we it's better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right? So, it's we're all on an even playing field. Yeah. And it we get a chance to do that. So here's a quick cheat for everybody, because I love a tactical tip. If you're trying to reach out to a peer or somebody, right? If it's a panel, it's easy. Just compliment that they said something brilliant or, right? Tell me that I'm not a complete, you know what, for introducing Lisa twice. And also, I'll love you because I feel like an idiot, right? But if it's a, if it's a, somebody who's a peer, like we were talking about, um, use the line, hey, hear great things. Hear great things about you. Your name came up from so-and-so, right? Always wanted to meet you. Let's be friends. It's done, that. right? Because we yeah. all have a little tiny bit of imposter syndrome, Absolutely. something you can count on with almost any woman you ever meet anywhere. And Absolutely. so to, right, to find out that somebody thinks we're okay, probably the best thing that happened to them that day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I need to hear that, especially now. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And I was just uh, going to piggyback on that and just say, for anyone listening to this and you're wondering what next steps is, because a lot of times when you're at that, you know, beginning in your career, or if you're an introvert, you, it's uh, this, this kind of conversation can be daunting and overwhelming. And I tell people, believe it or not, I, I was an introvert, right? And I am still, because that's how I regenerate is being by myself, being quiet. I can go days without talking to anyone. My nature though, is to give value to people and I do it quite well as a speaker. So having said that, curiosity is what got me to where I am. I started to trust the curiosity inside of me and realize that going places didn't mean I had to marry it, right? And that was from my dating coach. I learned that and I applied it into my professional life. You don't have to marry him, just go on a date. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, because as women, we, we go on one date and we already at the aisle, right? We already saying I do. We didn't picked out our bridesmaids, the dresses, the rain, like the flowers, right? Just follow your curiosity. If you think that you might want to go to that networking group, go. If you think you might want to attend that webinar, go. If you think you might want to read the book, start the book. If you don't finish the book, you know how many books I started and didn't finish? You know how many webinars I went to and left? You know how many, right? Follow your curiosity because what you're building inside of you is the trust for the voice that's inside of you and that's confidence in its essence. The stronger you can make that, that um, voice inside of you speak loud to you and guide you, the better and more incredible your life is and the more attractive you become because so few people listen to their voice, you will shine like a diamond. Amen. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> You'll miss out on meeting amazing women like this. Yes, exactly. Follow the curiosity. Women, we are the greatest gifts to each other. So put yourself out there. Put yourself out there. <laughs> We've got one last question. So due to social distancing, we've been pushed into a world of virtual networking. What are some of the new behaviors from 2020 that you'd like to be that you'd like to see incorporated in once we enter into the next normal? Lauren, what would you like to see be adopted into a post-COVID world? All right, I love the humanness that's happened in COVID. I really do. I've worked from home um, for over 20 years. And like I used to just sweat it on UPS Amazon Day, right? you know you're working your mute button like it's hot oh my god they're gonna know that i'm not in a corporate office somewhere you know fear sweat such crap i love that that's all equal now right and i get to see everybody's backgrounds and everybody is trying to figure out homeschooling and working at the same time and we've all had fails and i just love that um what's gone with that it, and to be sad, it's already going away a little bit, is the actual empathetic human connection that's happening at the beginning of these calls. How are you? And people actually listening to the answer and caring about that answer. So I hope that stays forever. And I just wanna say, cause I might not get a chance to talk again, love how our comments started lighting up when we yeah. talked about be you, be loud, don't be afraid to. Thank you, ladies, for doing that. You're awesome. Yes. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Um, I like to call this what called Build Back Better. Um, with my company, Computer Futures, we have a, our larger company, S3, and um, we're very fortunate to have Mark Dorman, who is our global CEO, lead with purpose and passion. And, and every week he has a leadership call, and we, they talked about building back better. How do we build back better? And so that has stayed with me because like I said, this has been hard for me. Um, I've been locked up in my apartment. I live by myself. It's like, I just want to get back to normal. It's like, no, I don't want to get back to normal. I want to figure, we need to figure out how to be built back better. And it's just like you said, Lauren, it's that human component and all of us caring about each other as human beings um, in this po in the post-COVID world and hopefully that that stays. Um, so I think we are at time for, and it's time for questions now. Um, so I don't know if Elizabeth, if you're gonna jump in here or give us a questions or do I need to um, go to the questions here? Guide me, like I said, this is only my second time moderating, so bear with me. <laughs> No worries, Stephanie. Um, if you're able to, there is the Q&A box at the bottom. If you click that, um, it should open up and you can just read off the questions. Um, okay. The red bar next to it. So we've, uh, so do, 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 um, let me find a short one real quick. Is, this you could, is there, so I've got from anonymous attendee, uh, as my CEO, Mark Dorman always says, anonymous always gives us the best questions. Um, is there a sample list of questions that a mentee could and or should ask when meeting with a mentor? 
I can take that first since I was talking a lot about that mental relationship. Um, I think you should always start with learning someone's story, right? Like you, be interested. You picked them for a reason. So let's get some history. Let's walk through career decisions and maybe be ready with one or two general, like, um, you know, what did you learn most? What was the hardest transition? Which job did you like the best? Uh, were you nervous when you went for promotion? What general career advice do you have? Um, and then after that first meeting that I liked it best when someone would come to a meeting with me with an agenda. I mean, it doesn't have to be a typed out agenda, but like, listen, I'm really struggling with X, Y, and Z. And I want to ask your advice about it. And I have these three questions prepared. So start general and then go where you need the help. Follow your curiosity. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'm going to get to the next question. So we, we make sure we get, get to everybody's questions. This is another one kind of in line with it. Again, anonymous with a great question. Thank you. For a sponsor, should I actively ask someone if they're willing to be my sponsor? Similar like when I seek out a mentor. Mm. Anybody else want to take that? It's a really good question. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up. Who's got a, a advice on that? So the question again was for a sponsor, should I actively ask someone if they're willing to be my sponsor, similar like when I seek out a mentor? And I, I, I say yes on that. I'd love it if anybody else would type, pop, pop in, right? Yeah. And if sponsor sounds weird, you can say advocate or you can say yeah. mentor, and right? Mentor, um, and typically somebody that you work with who's going to sponsor and champion your career development. Mm -hmm. along the it's usually someone you have a good relationship with. And if you know, you've done a good job from typically a, a boss or a manager, they yeah. would love to be part of your journey. You just, you have to ask. Yeah, when I would Asking agree a mentor, it's sometimes out of the blue. When you're asking a sponsor, it's probably, you've been in a room with them before and it's more like, could we do this again sometime? I loved your advice. I, I really admire you. Could, could we actually spend some time one-on-one -on -one in, in the next couple months? I, I'd love to pick your brain. Michelle? I would say exactly what you said, um, Lauren, just piggyback on that. Uh, it's definitely, it is more, it's a concerted conversation. So you're actually engaging in the choice and asking someone to help you with your career. So you definitely want to uh, set aside a meeting, uh, sit down and go over what you, what you hope that you would get and ask them and ask them what they would like to get from it as well. But definitely it's something that you want to prepare for. You want to plan, you want to ask and you want to be confident, right? And in, um, in how you go about it because you are asking someone of their time. They're giving you time. And I tell people the most precious commodity we have to date is time. Nothing more valuable than time. So make other people's time valuable and it will help your career always. I just want to add something to this because I'm not in corporate and I was in corporate for a very short time. Um, but when I was looking for mentorships for my agency, um, basically what I did was create a community of mentors. So I didn't just have one mentor. I was able to have various mentors so that I wouldn't take up like too much of anybody's time. And then what I did was, you know, I really created a community of those mentors for each other. So, um, so that was kind of cool. So, and again, it was kind of built on a community and, so sometimes if it's more than one person that they're mentoring, it can kind of go a lot farther with a lot less time and a lot less commitment. Um, so that was something that worked for me um, when I was growing my agency. Wonderful, thank you. And then we've got one last one from Angela Gore. Um, can you provide an example of sound bites? So I'm thinking that's from what Lauren was talking about earlier about introducing yourself. One thing that I will say that what has always worked for me is because this needs to be personalized. It, it, so your authentic self comes out is ask your peers, ask people that have worked, you've worked with and managers to give you feedback on your strengths, on your qualities. And then that way you can pull from that. Um, and in addition to any sound bites that Lauren might give you so that you're really personalizing it. And because that's what people are going to connect with is you. Yeah, I love yeah. that. So we, there's two different levels or, or versions of a sound bite. One is what you say about yourself, but the other is what they say about you. Right. When when they're in the room and you're not and you don't have much control over that, except for what your peers think about you. Back to our first comment. Right. So um, it, it, the soundbite of what happens in a room when you're not there is like, oh, yeah, Stephanie, she's that Salesforce wit lady who does conferences. Like, right. Like, it's just like the random stuff that you remember six months later about like, oh, Michelle. Yeah, she's a speaker. She's all about confidence, I think. Right. Yeah. Right. So you'd be like, oh yeah, LB, she's that loud one. <laughs> so that's 
days ago, Lauren saw me. She's like, I know you. I know you. And I was like, and, um, she's like, Nashville. I was like, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So um, I was going to say one of the things that you can do is if you do have a network of people or people you uh, know, like, and trust that KLT, we call it, um, you actually ask, ask them, or you can post this on social media, describe me in one word. And that's something that I do periodically, right? And um, it just to, to, to validate I'm still on track, it, it, it never varies far from who I know I am. And yes, again, the value and how you interact and network with people, that creates the sound bite. So when they're in the room and you're not there, um, generally, um, because my two words are igniting confidence, people get really excited when they talk about me when I'm not there. And I've, I've been can... told that quite a few times. Like, we talked about you, you weren't even there, and we were all jacked up. <laughs> Right? <laughs> that's the light you shine with. So yeah. the way you can pull that out in a sound bite that's not awkward, right? Because everybody has an elevator pitch. Hi, I'm Lauren. We yes. have a sales training company, blah, 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 blah. Nobody likes that crap, right? And so especially <laughs> when you're introducing yourself to peers or on LinkedIn or in this virtual world, just say something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. right? Hey, I'm Lauren and I'm all about helping women get to the next level, right? Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. That's a great sound bite. Who wouldn't want another? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of dudes actually don't care much about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that gets the lean in because people will ask you, Lauren, I'm certain you often get, oh my God, tell me more about that, right? They forget who they are because they are all, they're engaged in you and it creates such a, um, you know, rich conversation from that or point. Or they on. don't and they don't give a damn and it's fine. And then you move on, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Next. But it wasn't like, I'm Lauren and I'd like you to spend your sales training dollar with me. It was <laughs> Lauren and, and I care most about, I'm passionate about, I get hyped up about. And then they know to put me in that box. Oh yeah, women stuff. Yeah. Confidence That's stuff, promotion stuff. stuff. That's right. You need to yeah. with people who don't see you. The world is full of too many people who, who need you, who need what you offer. And sometimes there are going to be people out there that don't need what you have to sell and that's okay. Focus your energy on those who see you and need you, and you will yes. be so much happier. And so let your freak flag fly. <laughs> yes. I love it when people are like, hi, right? I'm <laughs> Stephanie. I like French, my French bulldog better than my husband, and I knit. <laughs> well, that is completely random, and I'm happy to know that. Thank you. You're different. <laughs> I remember that. Exactly. So that, you know, there aren't any more questions, so I want to make sure to, I want to give each of the panelists an opportunity to say one last closing remark, and then I'll wrap up and hand it off. So, um, Lauren, why don't you get us started, since you're, you're, you're on a roll right now. Uh, <laughs> it's finally my turn to talk, and I literally have nothing to say. Um, <laughs> join us in Girls Club. If you're sales, sales related, uh, right, come find us at wearegirlsclub.com. Don't go to girlsclub.com at work. That will get you in trouble. It's a very different site. Oh, okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was a tough URL. Yeah. <laughs> we are girlsclub.com. We'd love to have you in our tribe. Thanks for having me. Lisa? Hi. So um, if you liked this panel, I'm sure that you will enjoy uh, my Sales Empowerment Summit for Women. Uh, it's an online event. It's coming up this, um, this fall and it's uh, salesempowermentforwomen.com and you can sign up for updates right now. We'll be releasing the speakers and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to network and meet some awesome other women and learn about diversity in sales and how to use your power in sales, um, come and join us and you can connect with me you know, on any social channel. I'm always there. <laughs> Michelle. Uh, Michelle Baker, Sales and Confidence Coach. Um, if you're truly interested in turning that inner voice critic into a cheerleader and champion, reach out to me and you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, just send me a message. We can chat. And I want to plug Girls Club. I've spoken for Glove, Girls Club. I've met some of the members of Girls Club. It is an awesome place if you're really looking to next level your career and really want to learn uh, how to network, how to build those camaraderies, how to build those uh, mentors and those sponsorship. Lauren does an amazing job with the Women in Girls Club. So I have to plug her on that one. So Thank you. And there, we're all still talking about you. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. Again, my name is Stephanie Herrera, and I am the Global VP for Computer Futures, and I just want to thank you all for having me here. And I want to remind every woman on here that the world is changing, and I'm not going to get into the specifics and the details, but we've all been through it through this pandemic. We've all seen what's going on in the world globally, and we need each and every one of you women to stand up and let your voice be heard and get involved. You've gotten great advice from all these women here. 
take it and not, don't only apply it to your professional, but find a way that you can make a difference to make this world a better place because you really and truly can. We need you to get out there. Um, there's change to be made and we need to take advantage of this. So I'm gonna wrap up with two of my favorite quotes from two of my favorite action leaders since this is a Dell Women in Action group. I love, love that name. Um, so two of my favorite quotes for, for each of you women on here. First one is from Maya Angelou. My mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. And that is my wish for all of you ladies on here. And then the last one is from Martin Luther King Jr. Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? Thank you. Stephanie, thank you. You were amazing. Can thank we give you. her applause? You were absolutely incredible. <laughs> Seriously, y'all, I love this. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pour me a glass of wine and celebrate after this. <laughs> yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere, yes. <laughs> no judging. <laughs> a no judgment zone here. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you again, all the speakers for joining us. I know we just gave Stephanie a round of applause, but go ahead and give each of y'all selves a round of applause. <laughs> Um, I love the accessibility of the digital events. I love that, you know, we can bring in people from Boston and Arizona and Austin together all in one place without having to hop on a plane. Um, but I do miss being able to, you know, hug and shake hands after the event. So um, everyone, you've learned a, a bunch of remote networking tips. Don't let, you know, the fact that we can't have in-person events stop you from networking, prevent you from being able to get that next promotion. We know as women, our promotion velocity is not as strong as men. So let's combat that. Let's fight this. Let's help each other. Stay connected. Keep learning and, you know, make this just a habit that we take into our everyday life. You shouldn't have to see that someone isn't in your city or isn't in your industry to not reach out. So again, thank you so much for Delts for having us. Um, we'll be sending out a recording. I'll be sending out all the resources. We have lots of them from this webinar. So um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Hey everybody, thanks. Virtual everybody. hugs. Thanks, All Elizabeth. Nice, Lisa. Thanks, hugs. everyone. Really appreciated it. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. Diana, take care. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. All right, perfect.